All right, so now we're picking up with the uh, the same handout you guys have. I know this is a long um, this is a long note, guys. I, I appreciate you, you sticking with it. But what's going to happen is um, the home all the homework that I've got at the end of this is going to be distributed between. You're going to do a little bit tonight, and then a bunch of it. Uh, you're going to have the entire t period tomorrow to do uh, to to do a work period on this stuff. All right, so just uh, bear with me here. We're going to finish up this note. Here we go. Uh, phase shift between, so yeah, so we're talking about wave phase shifts. This is something that we didn't get to on the actual, um, in the simulations that I was doing with you. So this is, uh, this is new, so just uh, pay attention, I guess. A phase shift between two waves can be described as taking two identical waves then performing a horizontal translation. You guys know or should know what a horizontal translation is. Um, well, maybe not through grade 10 math, but if you've taken grade 11 math, you definitely should know what a horizontal translation is. All right, so let me just draw a regular, uh, si what looks like a sine wave or a sine curve. All right, so this is going to be the y-axis, is going to be the amplitude. And the x-axis is going to be over time. Or it could be distance as well. Let's, let's, let's make it distance. Okay, now that wave could keep going as well, but I'm only drawing one wavelength. Now, if I take a second wave, which has the same wavelength, doesn't necessarily have to have the same amplitude, but definitely the same wavelength, um, and I just move it over a little bit. I'm just going to mark my spots here. Let's try that again. All right, so that slight distance between the um, the location of the waves, uh, where they start and where they end, that's called the, the phase shift. Okay, so we can say that this distance from here to here Phase shift of the wave. Okay, and the symbol for that is whatever that thing is. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, it it's a Greek letter or something, some sort. All right, that's the symbol for phase shift. Uh, the above two waves are said to be out of phase. If you have Star Trek fans, they use that all the time. It's like that's their, how they do. Uh, the cloaking for the uh, for the starships. They say they're out of phase with our um, with our our universe. So I don't. They don't actually explain how to do that because that's not a real thing. In case you were wondering, uh, it's 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 science fiction. But anyways, that's the explanation they give for it. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's still there, but it's out of phase with the universe. And the symbol for phase shift, as I showed you above, is that guy. All right, so we're going to talk about two special cases for phase shifts. Um, first one is completely out of phase, and that's when the two, two waves are shifted by 180 degrees, or one half of a wavelength. All right, so then the crest of one wave overlaps with the trough of the other, resulting in complete destructive interference. So let me draw, again, we've got amplitude, and we can do uh, distance or time, it really doesn't matter here. Okay, so distance. Again, this is my first wave. Now, if my second wave starts here, here's what it looks like. Okay. And if I continue the first wave through, you can see everywhere else now we get the same uh, crest overlapping the trough. And so the resulting wave, and I'm actually going to take this and make it go backwards here so we show that all three of these can be uh, overlapping. So 
Let me just label that as 180 degree or one half lambda. Okay, it's a 180 degrees or one half lambda shift. The resulting wave, we have complete destructive interference here. All right, so the resulting wave is just flat. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing actually there. The two waves completely cancel each other out. So this is what happens when, um, if you're, uh, if you're driving uh, between or, or between two hills or, or up at Milton, there's the escarpment and the radio reception is really bad. When, what's happening there is the um, reflected radio signals are being uh, inverted by one half of the wavelength, and you actually get pretty bad reception. They, they can cancel each other out. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, real-world applications to this. We get into some of them in IB physics. We get into some of them in grade 12 physics. Um, but for now, you just have to kind of understand that when you shift the second wave and overlap it, you can get different types of um, interference. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what happens when you actually shift a wave when the second wave is completely in unison with the first wave. Okay, it's completely in phase, which results in constructive interference. So if the second wave starts after one full wavelength, okay, that's a complete wavelength shift. And it's completely overlapping with the first wavelength. And I'll use a dotted line to take it back as well and show that it continues to overlap. So this is a full wavelength uh, phase shift. Now, you can also have a, a zero phase shift if you just take two identical waves. They're also in 100% uh, uh, in phase with each other. Now, the resulting wave for this one, instead of canceling out, you get a super crest. You get a uh, complete constructive interference here. So this red line, you know what, let me do this again. That was terrible. The red line represents um, the resulting wave pattern. Do this a little slower here. Still nasty, but you get the point. So I'm going to label this as the resulting uh, waveform. Questions? All right, the um, ask each other, I guess. So here's the last section of the note. Woo! Standing waves. We did see these in the uh, simulation. Standing waves are formed when the length of the medium is a multiple of half of the wavelength of the wave. So this is a uh, this is a rule for standing waves. So the length of the medium has to equal some multiple, k, of the wavelength over 2, so of the 1 half wavelength. Okay, so k is just equal to any integer value. Okay, and that, I'm going to illustrate this in the, the three diagrams I've got here, okay? So for, 
This is going to be, first one's going to be k equals 1. So we're going to do for k equals 1, 2, or 3. So when k equals 1, that means the length of the medium, this medium is length L. Um, do it over here. That's going to be equal to one half of the wavelength. So what does that look like? That means that the wavelength Right. If I were to extend this, I'm just going to, uh, you don't have to draw this, but if I were to extend it out twice as far, it would take twice the length of the, the medium to actually contain one whole, oops. Oh, one whole uh, wave. Okay, so the medium is one half of the wavelength. And I'm going to draw a dotted line showing that it is a standing wave. Okay, so that's the, the bottom part of it. Okay, now if k equals 2, that means that if I sub in k equals 2 into the equation, you're going to see that the 2's cancel out, so the length is equal to the wavelength. And that's what this looks like here. We get one full wave within the length of the strip, or the length of the medium. Now, who remembers what this point is called? Yeah, Dan. Yeah, you're right. Okay, good work. That's called a node. Yeah, I'm losing my mind. Okay. Uh, I'm almost stuck. <laughs> okay, so that's a node. And don't forget that the, the points of uh, complete constructive interference, these are called anti-nodes. And if k equals 3, that means I get one and a half waves. Let's see if I can eyeball this properly. But one and a half waves within an actual uh, one length of the medium. Ugly, ugly, ugly. I'm going to try that again. close enough. Okay, nodes again. Right. So, um, I'm going to erase this just for the, to order this a little bit better. In this case, we're going to say that the length of the medium is equal to the wavelength over 2. In this case, the length of the medium is equal to the wavelength. And in the third case, where k equals 3, the length of the medium is 1.5 the, the wavelength of the standing wave. All right, you can keep going for k equals 4 to 999 billion, 999 million, 999,999. 999, but we're going to leave it off right here. All right, and I think we have one last little example to do, and that'll be it. Here we go. All right, so the following is a snapshot of a standing wave on a 0 0.8 meter long guitar string. I'm going to draw this in. We're going to do this the, from k equals 3 from before here. I'm going to try and draw the same type of thing happening. So you guys can draw that in as well. First thing it says is to label the nodes and the anti-nodes on the wave. We can do that real quick because we've already done it five times. 
and the antinodes up here. All right, what's the wavelength of the wave? So just going back here to the previous one, the relationship was for k equals 3, the length of the medium was 1.5 times the wavelength. And we're told, I think, in the question that the guitar string is 0 0.8 meters. And so we've just got a real quick division out. Um, so 0.8 divided by 1.5. You end up with 0 0.53 meters. Okay. And lastly, a student measures the frequency of the wave to be 440 hertz to determine the velocity of the wave through the spring. All right, here we go. This one, we've got to go back and use the universal wave equation. Okay, the universal wave equation. Let's try it again. What can, uh, who, who knows the answer here? What's, what's the universal wave equation? Uh, using telepathy, telepathy. Let's go with um, Amanda. What's the answer? That's a kinematics equation. Come on now, Amanda. Okay, you're right. B equals F lambda. So we've got the wavelength and we've got the frequency. All we have to do is sub in the two values. Uh, 440 hertz times 0 0.53 meters. You end up with 233 meters per second. Okay, so you got a bunch of homework questions down there. Let's say you do the um, let's say you do the worksheets tonight, and then tomorrow in class. And tomorrow in class, you end up doing the uh, the textbook homework. That's going to be Friday, I believe. Okay, yeah, Tuesday we did the test. Wednesday you did the um, introduction to waves, frequency, period, universal wave equation. Thursday you're doing this, and then Friday is a work period. Boom, done. I'm back on Monday. Have a good weekend, guys. And if you need any help, just send, shoot me an email. Um, I will be checking my email.